plagiarizing aristotle from the refutation of all heresies by hippolytus of rome one hundred and seventy to two hundred and thirty five a d this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org aristotle then makes a threefold division of substance for one portion of it is a certain genus and another a certain species as that philosopher expresses it and a third a certain individual what is individual however is so not through any minuteness of body but because by nature it cannot admit of any division whatsoever the genus on the other hand is a sort of aggregate made up of many and different germs and from this genus just as from a certain heap all the species of existent things derive their distinctions and the genus constitutes a competent cause for the production of all generated entities in order however that the foregoing statement may be clear i shall prove my position through an example and by means of this it will be possible for us to retrace our steps over the entire speculation of the peripatetic sage aristotle's general idea we affirm the existence of animal absolutely not some animal and this animal is neither ox nor horse nor man nor god nor is it significant of any of these at all but is animal absolutely from this animal the species of all particular animals derive their subsistence and this animality itself the summum genus constitutes the originating principle for all animals produced in those particular species and yet is not itself any one of the things generated for man is an animal deriving the principle of existence from that animality and horse is an animal deriving the principle of existence from that animality the horse and ox and dog and each of the rest of the animals derive the principle of existence from the absolute animal while animality itself is not any of these non-entity as a cause if however this animality is not any of these species the subsistence according to aristotle of the things that are generated derived its reality from non-existent entities for animality from whence these singly have been derived is not any one of them and though it is not any one of them it has yet become some one originating principle of existing things but who it is that has established this substance as an originating cause of what is subsequently produced we shall declare when we arrive at the proper place of entertaining a discussion of this sort substance according to aristotle the predicates since however as i have stated substance is threefold namely genus species and individual and since we have set down animality as being the genus and man the species as being already distinct from the majority of animals but notwithstanding still to be identified with animals of his own kind inasmuch as not being yet moulded into a species of realized substance therefore it is that when i impart form under a name to a man derived from the genus i style him socrates or diogenes or some one of the many denominations in use and since in this way i repeat i comprehend under a name the man who constitutes a species that is generated from the genus i denominate a substance of this description individual for genus has been divided into species and species into individual but as regards the individual 
since it has been comprehended under a name it is not possible that according to its own nature it could be divided into anything else as we have divided each of the forementioned genus and species aristotle primarily and especially and preeminently entitles this substance inasmuch as it cannot either be predicated of a subject or exist in a subject he however predicates of the subject just as with the genus what i said constituted animality and which is predicated by means of a common name of all particular animals such as ox horse and the rest that are placed under this genus for it is true to say that man is an animal and horse an animal and that ox is an animal and each of the rest now the meaning of the expression predicated of a subject is this that inasmuch as it is one it can be predicated in like manner of many particulars even though these happen to be diversified in species for neither does horse nor ox differ from man so far forth as he is an animal for the definition of animal is said to suit all animals alike for what is an animal if we define it a general definition will comprehend all animals for animal is an animated substance endued with sensation such are ox man horse and each of the rest of the animal kingdom but the meaning of the expression in a subject is this that what is inherent in anything not as a part it is impossible should exist separately from that in which it is but this constitutes each of the accidents resident in substance and is what is termed quality now according to this we say that certain persons are of such a quality for instance white gray black just unjust temperate and other characteristics similar to these but it is impossible for any one of these to subsist itself by itself but it must inhere in something else if however neither animal which i predicate of all individual animals nor accidents which are discoverable in all things of which they are non-essential qualities can subsist themselves by themselves and yet if individuals are formed out of these it follows therefore that the triply divided substance which is not made up out of other things consists of non-entities if then what is primarily and preeminently and particularly denominated substance consists of these it derives existence from non-entities according to aristotle aristotle's cosmogony his psychology his entelechy his theology his ethics basilides follows aristotle but concerning substance the statements now made will suffice but not only is substance denominated genus species and individual but also matter and form and privation there is however as regards the substance in these no difference even though the division be allowed to stand now inasmuch as substance is of this description the arrangement of the world has taken place according to some such plan as the following the world is divided according to aristotle into very numerous and diversified parts now the portion of the world which extends from the earth to the moon is devoid of foresight guideless and is under the sway of that nature alone which belongs to itself but another part of the world which lies beyond the moon and extends to the surface of heaven is arranged in the midst of all order and foresight and governance now the celestial superficies constitutes a certain fifth substance and is remote from all those natural elements out of which the cosmical system derives consistence 
and this is a certain fifth substance according to aristotle as it were a certain supermundane essence and this essence has become a logical necessity in his system in order to accord with the peripatetic division of the world and the topic of this fifth nature constitutes a distinct investigation in philosophy for there is extant a certain disquisition styled a lecture on physical phenomena in which he has elaborately treated concerning the operations which are conducted by nature and not providence in the quarter of space extending from the earth as far as the moon and there is also extant by him a certain other peculiar treatise on the principles of things in the region beyond the moon and it bears the following inscription metaphysics and another peculiar dissertation has been written by him entitled concerning a fifth substance and in this work aristotle unfolds his theological opinions there exists some such division of the universe as we have now attempted to delineate in outline and corresponding with it is the division of the aristotelian philosophy his work however styled concerning the soul is obscure for in the entire three books where he treats of this subject it is not possible to say clearly what is aristotle's opinion concerning the soul for as regards the definition which he furnishes of soul it is easy enough to declare this but what it is that is signified by the definition is difficult to discover for soul he says is an entelechy of a natural organic body but to explain what this is at all would require a very great number of arguments and a lengthened investigation as regards however the deity the originator of all those glorious objects in creation the nature of this first cause even to one conducting his speculations by a more prolonged inquiry than that concerning the soul is more difficult to know than the soul itself the definition however which aristotle furnishes of the deity is i admit not difficult to ascertain but it is impossible to comprehend the meaning of it for he says the deity is a conception of conception but this is altogether a non-existent entity the world however is incorruptible and eternal according to aristotle for it has in itself nothing faulty inasmuch as it is directed by providence and nature and aristotle has laid down doctrines not only concerning nature and a cosmical system and providence and god but he has written more than this for there is extant by him likewise a certain treatise on ethical subjects and these he inscribes the book of ethics but throughout these he aims at rendering the habits of his hearers excellent from being worthless when therefore basilides has been discovered not in spirit alone but also in the actual expressions and names transferring the tenets of aristotle into our evangelical and saving doctrine what remains but that by restoring what he has appropriated from others we should prove to the disciples of this heretic that christ will in no wise profit them inasmuch as they are heathenish basilides therefore and isidorus the true son and disciple of basilides say that matthias communicated to them secret discourses which being specially instructed he heard from the saviour let us then see how clearly basilides simultaneously with isidorus and the entire band of these heretics not only absolutely belies matthias but even the saviour himself time was says basilides when there was nothing not even however did that nothing constitute anything of existent things but to express myself undisguisedly and candidly and without any quibbling it is altogether nothing 
but when he says i employ the expression was i do not say that it was but i speak in this way in order to signify the meaning of what i wish to elucidate i affirm then he says that it was altogether nothing for he says that it is not absolutely ineffable which is named so although undoubtedly we call this ineffable but that which is non-ineffable for that which is non-ineffable is not denominated ineffable but is he says above every name that is named for he says by no means for the world are these names sufficient but so manifold are its divisions that there is a deficiency of names i do not take it upon myself to discover he says proper denominations for all things undoubtedly however one ought mentally not by means of names to conceive after an ineffable manner the peculiarities of things denominated for an equivocal terminology when employed by teachers has created for their pupils confusion and a source of error concerning objects the basilidians in the first instance laying hold on this borrowed and furtively derived tenet from the peripatetic sage play on the folly of those who herd together with them for aristotle born many generations before basilides first lays down a system in the categories concerning homonymous words and these heretics bring this system to light as if it were peculiarly their own and as if it were some novel doctrine and some secret disclosure from the discourses of matthias since therefore nothing existed i mean not matter nor substance nor what is insubstantial nor is absolute nor composite nor conceivable nor inconceivable nor what is sensible nor devoid of senses nor man nor angel nor god nor in short any of these objects that have names or are apprehended by sense or that are cognized by intellect but are thus cognized even with greater minuteness still when all things are absolutely removed since i say nothing existed god non-existent whom aristotle styles conception of conception but these basilidians non-existent inconceivably insensibly indeterminately involuntarily impassively and unactuated by desire willed to create a world now i employ he says the expression willed for the purpose of signifying that he did so involuntarily and inconceivably and insensibly and by the expression world i do not mean that which was subsequently formed according to breadth and division and which stood apart nay far from this for i mean the germ of a world the germ however of the world had all things in itself just as a grain of mustard comprises all things simultaneously holding them collected together within the very smallest compass namely roots stem branches leaves and innumerable grains which are produced from the plant as seeds again of other plants and frequently of others still that are produced from them in this way non-existent god made the world out of non-entities casting and depositing some one seed that contained in itself a conglomeration of the germs of the world but in order that i may render more clearly what it is those heretics affirm i shall mention the following illustration of theirs as an egg of some variegated and particolored bird for instance the peacock or some other bird still more manifold and particolored as the egg i say of such a bird though being one in reality contains in itself numerous forms of manifold and particolored and much compounded substances so he says the non-existent seed of the world which has been deposited by the non-existent god constitutes at the same time the germ of a multitude of forms and a multitude of substances end of plagiarizing aristotle from the refutation of all heresies by hippolytus of rome 
one hundred and seventy to two hundred and thirty five a d.